So at LAC USC Medical Center, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Los Angeles, this is the general hospital from the TV series. They have about a million visits a year to their outpatient, inpatient, and ED. They are the second busiest facility in the country. The other one's in uh, Miami somewhere. And what happened was their, their new CEO, who came in about three and a half years ago, found out that he's building a new hospital that's smaller. So they're going from 750 beds, which are mostly full now, to 600 beds, of which they'll only be able to staff and run about 545. So what do you do with the other 150, 200 patients? So you know, one of the biggest challenges the medical center has is this really fragmented network. They don't even know where the patients are coming from, and they certainly don't know where the patients are going afterwards. And, and one of our community clinics explained this, that, that nobody was really sharing information. Nobody knew where the patients were, what was happening. We had a revolving door. The patient hits the ER, gets admitted. They spend $20,000 taking care of the patient, running tests. Everybody in the medical center now knows what's wrong with the patient. The patient leaves the medical center, stumbles back into their clinic, and it starts all over again because the clinic has no idea what happened at the medical center. So we decided what we needed to do is really what we call redefine managed care for the uninsured. And we were looking at kind of a, a Kaiser type model. Kaiser is pretty good at this. They, they, they tend to be pretty good at, at managing their patients and coordinating some of their systems. And regardless of what we think of Kaiser in terms of some of the challenges they have, overall they have a pretty good care coordination model. So we wanted to be able to redefine managed care for the medically underserved, uninsured people, people on Medi-Cal who fall on and off, the people that Safety Net serves, making sure that they get the kind of care coordination so that we can get them a $100 medical office visit at a community clinic instead of a $20,000 visit to the ER and inpatient site. So again, some of the safety net challenges. You've got General Hospital up on a hill, beautiful old building, 750 beds, a million visits a year. Everybody knows where General Hospital is. If you ask a patient, you know, why is it that you don't go to a clinic? One of their answers is, well, I can see General Hospital, a little clinic on the corner, I don't even know it existed. So very fragmented system of care. The medical center not talking to the clinics, the clinic's not talking to the medical center. If a clinic needs to get someone in for specialty care or diagnostics, so the kind of thing that you need in order to prevent uh, an admission and a, and, a, and a kind of a downgrading of a patient's status, they basically get to queue up for six months or more. And, and the funny part is, you know, for a homeless patient, the medical center will mail the patient their appointment. So you can see where the system starts to break down. Okay, chronic ill patients, again, not receiving ongoing care. We have uh, frequent utilization of high cost intensive services, and I alluded to some of the costs, but just to make it clear to you so you can understand why this is so important in terms of the ability for our country to continue to care for our citizenry, we're talking about you know, a $100, $150 visit to a primary care provider maybe once a month versus every time that patient gets admitted to the medical center, it's $20,000. So you know, one admission, because the average admission to that medical center is five or six days. The average admission for the patient population we've been focusing on, the really sick uninsured patients uh, who are chronically ill, tends to be seven days. Seven days at $2,000 a day, plus the ER fees, it really starts to add up quickly. So there's this, you know, now one of the solutions, actually the, the other county we're going to be working with soon, a consulting group went into the county, and the county said, look, we've only got 220 beds in our hospital, our ER is overflowing, our hospital is overflowing, what do we do? And the consulting group said, oh, you know, build another 100 beds, and expand your ER, and you'll take care of it. Well, so for those of us who don't have you know, uh, money growing on trees, that, that's a challenging, uh, a challenging solution. So one of, the, one of the things we have to take in terms of philosophically as we go forward is we have to kind of be on the same sheet of music and that we can't continue to build hospitals and ERs forever in order to take care of the population, that we do need a population-based approach. So this is kind of, uh, this, this kind of describes the challenge we have right now. Uh, as we go forward to work with this population. You know, you've got consumer-directed health care. We've had a few speakers talk about various different types of personal health records. And, you know, one of the challenges is, you know, it, there is not uninsured directed health care. And, you know, again, what do we do with the homeless patient? What do we do with the patient who uh, may not be an undocumented immigrant, but they still don't speak English, and they actually don't even read Spanish? What do we do with these people? Challenging. So what is our goal? We want to create a new patient care model to address the kinds of challenges we've been talking about. What are our objectives? We want to develop an efficient care management model because, again, there is a subset of a patient population in most areas, the 20% of the patients that drive the 80% of the costs. And we're focusing, again, on an uninsured population, many undocumented patients. They're uninsurable, many of these patients. Because they're undocumented, they're not going to get on Medi-Cal. They're not going to get SSI. 
they're going to be uninsured. We want to empower patients to take more responsibility for their medical conditions, and we want to improve coordination and communication between primary care and hospital specialty care. And this, is, again, is a really critical component because when we talk about want to, wanting to teach patients, not only to access their personal health record, but we want to teach the patient, listen, if you have some symptoms and you think you need to see a doctor, go to your primary care clinic, don't go to the ER. If you have a chronic illness, see your primary care doctor regularly, don't go to the ER when we need to amputate your foot. Well, here's the challenge we've run into, is that the patients, by the way, this, this uninsured, low-income population, this is not an unintelligent population. And one of the challenges we have, someone said earlier, you know, who are these users? Well, our users are very intelligent, I mean, their IQ levels are probably great, uh, and, and they learn very quickly. So if I say to the patient, go to clinic A in your neighborhood for care, and they go there, and clinic A says, okay, you're really sick, you're going to need these diagnostic tests and this specialty care consultation, and I can't get it for you, sorry. You know, let me try and get it, I can send to the county, they can't get it, and so now they say to the patient, we better go to the ER. Well, I don't have a car, I got kids to take care of, I work three jobs, why am I wasting my time going to your clinic so you can tell me to go to the ER? I'm a smart person, I'm gonna start going to the ER. So the other thing we have to remember when we talk about the safety net, the patients have been trained well and they're reacting very well to what they've been trained for. The system is created to get the results we're getting. So we really need to, in, in phase one and two, which we've spent a lot of time on, build a network infrastructure. Take these community clinics that are not quote unquote part of the county safety net structure and really integrate them with the county medical center so that patients can go to a clinic in their community and that clinic can actually get the patient what they need. We need to have uh, the patient, their clinic, and a care manager. We have a, actually a care manager with us today that you're gonna hear from later, Alex. They need to have a partnership, the three of them, to manage the patient's care. And of course, again, with access to the med center and the specialty docs. And finally, our Navalinks care management assessment tools that we've created in our system. That's kind of where we are now, and I'll be able to show you a bit about where we are now. Our plan is to move to what we call phase three, which is to take uh, what WorldDoc, which is our, our IT company partner, some of the work that they've done around personal health record and, and health risk assessments, and integrate that into these care management assessment tools that we've created, which is all web-based. So that in the end, we can have one tool where the care manager can manage the patient's care through assessments and a care plan, which I'll show you a bit of, and the patient can also have access to a personal health record, which has a back-end access for providers so everyone can see the same information. And there's a health risk assessment on there that the patient can answer ongoing so everyone can kind of know where the patient's at with their disease process. So, a little, little tiny bit of an idea about how we see this working. So our vision is that for a, a personal health record, patient care management system, that you want to have two portals. You want to have the patients enter one way and the caregivers enter another way. Because patients and caregivers are different and the two are never going to be the same. Caregivers like to see things one way and patients like to see them another way. This is currently the front page that you would see if you were one of our care managers. I'm sure you can all read everything. It's really clear, right? The, the top tabs are various different areas. For those of you who can't read a, like two font, uh, assessments, <laughs> gaps, tools, uh, you can go to various patients, you can see reports, all care management related. What do I mean by care management? This system is designed to assess the patient's health needs and social services needs. By the way, you know, again, when we're talking about especially the underserved, but actually many of us, med med our medical needs don't stand alone, right? In other words, if my car breaks down, I can't get to my clinic to get my medical needs taken care of. If my kid needs help at school, you know, I might have to spend the night doing homework with them rather than doing my exercise. And so there are social issues. For our patients, these are much more exacerbated. If I don't have a roof over my head, I, I don't want to talk to you about taking my diabetes medication. And so this system, that this page and everything that leads from this page is all about tools that assess where the patient's at with their medical needs and their social needs, and then providing referrals and tracking referrals and trying to get them where they wanna go. This is just an example of some of the assessments. There, there, are, there are a number of them, and what happens is our care manager meets the patient in the hospital, they sign them up for this network of care, they then meet the patient at the clinic and they start running through these assessments with the patient. And uh, I'll be showing you a care plan page this just gives you an idea of, there's a whole tickler system, of course, very common to these kinds of systems where you have tasks that you can generate and appointments you can generate.